Sabbath on KPOI 105.9, the Big Kahuna, Honolulu, on the Classic Rock. And it is Dave Lawrence broadcasting live inside the Diamond Head Crater. And our first guest of the afternoon has joined me here, and I'm really excited to get to talk to this cat who's going to be performing tomorrow in here. Uh, harmonica player Norton Buffalo performing with Steve Miller Band, and he joins me now as my guest on 105.9. Aloha, bro. Hey, it's great to be here, and it's incredible to be here in the crater, man. This is big power here oh it's huge it's good stuff for sure welcome back and and have you ever you've never p performed here inside diamond head before never performed inside have diamond you visited head. it i had not you know i've been to this island uh, a pile of times playing with my band playing with steve's band uh, down through the years um but i've never made it into here so this is really cool for me and uh, there's a lot of stories about some of the old crater festivals from a long time ago uh you know Tall tales about the last time Steve was here. Right, right. You know, just uh, uh, this is great. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, it's a great feeling. And, and uh, when we were pulling in, it was pretty wild because uh, the sky had not lightened yet when we were arriving. So it was still pretty, pretty dark up there. And as we entered inside the crater, on the inner walls of the crater, you could see like small streams of water like gushing down, little tiny, little, little rivers, basically, because uh -huh. of all the rain. Uh, and it has turned this place into such a green. It's like an oasis inside here. Yeah. You know, all the green. It's like the, and the, now the blue is... With the sky, right? Oh, it's so gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be huge. So your first time ever visiting Diamond Head, and you're going to be performing. That's a special thing. Not a lot of That's people can say. That's a great thing, yeah. <laughs> and uh, now you joined Steve after recording. It was Fly like an eagle was right after that that you started it was while he was recording fly like an eagle actually steve and i ran into each other at a couple jam sessions and just hit it off really good you know we had one jam session that went on like for about five or six hours late 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 into the night we were just having so much fun playing and at the time he was in the studio working on fly like an eagle it was the fall of 75 and uh 1975 for the yeah, yeah. that that old century <laughs> And uh, we started hanging out. Actually, while he was recording that, he, uh, with his rhythm section from the Steve Miller Band, recorded a few of my tunes. And I was hanging around him. I, you know, played a little harps, you know, did some bird whistles on Wild Mountain Honey, did a couple things. Not all of it ended up on that album. But in, uh, in the summer of 76, when Fly Like an Eagle came out, I was on tour with him. And I've been in his band ever since. So it's uh, over 30 years of hanging out with Steve. And still just loving it you know get on stage and we sing so wonderful together uh the band that steve's got right now is i think the best band he's ever had steve is uh, i'm really looking forward to seeing i've seen steve and, and and you uh several times as i was growing up and last time when i had steve on the air when we were putting the tickets on sale for this uh we were reminiscing about and and you'll provide any insight that, that you remember from this tour the summer of 92 i remember you guys did this great double bill with the dead oh with the dead yeah big stadium show i mean huge yeah yeah, stadium yeah. And you shows. came to one of those i saw both of the giant stadium shows oh actually. yeah yeah so i saw a couple of them plus uh, scott who's here on our crew saw a few of those shows too those are great well you know jerry jerry garcia had started doing one of my songs with his band oh what was uh, that a song called bread box okay and uh and so uh and years ago back in the early 80s i had a band with mickey hart a band called high noon yeah i was gonna ask you so, about that so i've been hanging around those guys for a long time so getting back and doing those shows in 92 was a lot of fun for me uh jerry actually asked me to write a second verse for Breadbox on my record and only had one verse but i had a bunch of tapes of, of him doing it and they're all about 15 to 17 minutes long so uh I, I understood why he wanted another verse. You know, he, was, <laughs> he was screaming for another verse. But yeah, those shows we did, Steve got up and played. I think it was in, in Buckeye, uh, back in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Buckeye Lakes. Uh, that we both got up and played with him a little bit. And it was a lot of fun hanging out with those guys. Yeah, I was going to say, those jams, I remember Steve got up there at the, uh, at the Giant Stadium show, and, and the crowd just went ballistic when Steve went out. And he had, the Dead are a very loose sound, and Steve has a really tight sound. And it, it really... Two different balls of wax, but Steve knows how to jam. And had a gel with someone else, right? Uh, but Steve knows how to jam, you know, because he comes from that from a long time back. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, yeah. That's good stuff that you have memories. How, how you were, it was Mickey Hart and, who, and Merle Saunders in that. Mer Mickey Hart, Merle Saunders, Bobby Vega was on bass. In High Noon. Uh, Vicki Randall, who plays percussion. Uh, she, she's actually the guy that plays percussion on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Oh, wow. She does a lot of the singing and stuff. Uh, 
Uh, Jim McPherson, who wrote a lot of songs. He wrote Fire on the Mountain and a lot of other songs. Or no, maybe that was Hunter's song. Anyway, McPherson wrote a lot of songs, and, and he was in a band, and a guitar player named Mike Hinton. And you guys did gigs in like the early 80s for a while? Yeah, early 80s for a while, and then it just kind of, you know, everybody got busy doing their own thing and kind of went, went different directions. You work with so many cats. You're also hooked up with the, didn't you do something with the Doobies not long ago? I've done a few things with the Doobies. Um, well, we've been friends for years. Uh, I played a little bit on Living on the Fault, the fault Line. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played a couple songs on Minute by Minute. And uh, down through the years, uh, because they're from the Bay Area, uh, we've run into each other and jammed a lot. Um, last, the last couple of years, I've done shows where it's the Doobie Brothers with me as a special guest, and I show up and just play harp and sing background and hang with the guys. And, and there's a couple of songs we really wail on that are really fun. So, uh, you know, Pat lives in, uh, the, the guitar player lives in Maui, and uh, I actually came over a couple of years ago and did a show with him over on a couple of benefits over on Maui. Oh, nice. So uh, Yeah, he's active in the community over there. That's he cool. really is, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, the Doobie Brothers, uh, Bonnie Raitt, you know, I've recorded with Bonnie Raitt, uh, Johnny Cash, uh, Kenny Loggins. And you had some cool, you were in the, the Rows with Bette Midler, right? I got to do the Rows. That was fun. That was 1978, man. I was a puppy. Yeah. And, uh, and that was a trip. Uh, you know, we, we, we were, originally that was written to be the story of Janis Joplin. Right. And because of legal hassles with the family, uh, they changed the title to The Rose and changed the story a little bit. But it was really fun to be part of that. I'll tell you, Bette Midler's an incredible woman and uh, great actress, uh, and she works hard. And the storyline still remained pretty heavy. I mean, it was still an, oh, ed- yeah, it was a an edgy tale. thing. And, and, you know, but during the day, while the band was practicing, Bette was always out filming. So all day long when we rehearsed, I was the singer. And I've never been, I mean, with Steve, I sing, uh, it's a rock and roll band, but the singing is uh, a lot of melodic, melodic stuff. Uh, the Rose, these were more rock and roll songs. And man, I'm singing these high parts because I'm, you know, trying to basically cover Bette's parts while right. she wasn't there. Man, when we finished that movie, my throat, I was, I was, I was a full-fledged <laughs> rock and roll singer when I got done with that movie. And uh, the following year, I got to be in a movie that, it had high hopes. Michael Cimino had just won all these Academy Awards for The Deer Hunter. Mm. And uh, he went to Montana to do this movie called Heaven's Gate. And I got to spend about eight months living in Montana, uh, working on this film with Chris Christopherson, uh, Jeff Bridges, Christopher Walken. Oh, a lot of heavy uh, cats. I mean, uh, the, uh, Sam Waterston. I mean, the list is long of all the actors and actresses. And it was a wonderful time hanging out in Montana. But the movie just got panned big time <laughs> by the critics. So, so it would have been a wonderful you know, st- uh, feather in my cap. I-, I still think it was a wonderful feather in my cap because uh, it got me up in Montana uh, – which is another type of paradise. Yeah, a gorgeous you setting. Know, this here in Hawaii is uh, uh, just a beautiful place. Uh, Hawaii is a, absolutely a paradise. But Montana is another kind. It's up in the mountains in the Rockies, and it's beautiful. And we had a lot of fun doing that. But, I mean, you know, I'm, and now I'm back here with Steve, you know. It's, it's a huge thing having you here for what will be, I, I think, a, a once-in-a-lifetime sort of gig for a lot of folks. When, he, when Steve was on, he was talking about how he was, he sort of remembered the set from, as I, as I recall the interview, he remembered what he had played uh, when he had originally done the Crater uh, Fest, as it was called then. Have you guys rehearsed a special, uh, a bunch of tunes for this, or is there something unusual that you're going to be pulling out? Well, he may pull a couple uh, tricks out of the hat you know the band's been with him long enough now that um, and this is a great band like I say I think it's one of Steve's best bands ever mm. um, but we know a lot of songs so Steve puts the list together and we just go okay so you don't know yet I mean so Steve might just come here and really well, really I know shock we'll be us doing all. a lot of the greatest hits and I mean you know I know that's what you guys love yeah yeah but Steve always loves to do the blues and we always like to go back and do a couple things from back in the 60s and and uh, you know he It'll be a mix, you know. He doesn't like to get up and just do nothing but the hits. Yeah, right. Uh, because when it gets down to it, Steve's love is just to play that guitar and rip it up. Nice. So, um, and, you know, uh, what a great bill. You know, we got Linda Ronstadt. I ran into her when she uh, got in at the airport. And uh, we got War. We did a show with War last year. And those guys smoke. So. It's going to be a jam sort of possibly, though? Uh, yeah, I 
don't know. I'm getting that feeling. At least everybody's got the good vibe between the artists. You never know, man. You never know. Well, that's how a jam should be. It really should be something. You never know if, if it's going to work out. Well, it's going to be a, a special show tonight, and you can stay on top of what uh, my guest is up to uh, via Norton-Buffalo.com. That's the official site. It'll, all the lies you need to know and more. <laughs> and then some. And a pleasure having you stop by and, and be my guest this afternoon, dude. And we're going to throw down some Steve Miller. We'll do Steve then and now coming up here on Cape Boy 105.9. Thank you very much, Norton. Thanks a lot, Dave. You're the man. Take the money and run. Aloha. This is Norton Buffalo from the Steve Miller Band, and you're right where you should be, enjoying the best show on the air with my friend, Dave Lawrence. Aloha, Dave.